Okay, if you would stand up. And then just separate your feet. Soften your knees and reach the ball up. And bring it down. And reach it up. And bring it down. And reach. And bring it down. And you can take those legs a little more open for a good strong base. Take it off to the right side. Reach and stretch. And bring it back in. Take it off to the left side. Reach and stretch. And bring it back in. To the right side. Reach and stretch. And bring it back in. And reach and stretch. Take it back up to the very top. Now take a circle to the right knee. Circle and curve forward. Bring it off to the left side. Bring it all the way up. Continue that circle a little faster. Bring it forward, side, and up. And as you come through the middle, carve and bend your knees, contracting through the stomach. Take it one more time to this side. Come up to the top. Stop the momentum. Go to the left side. So side, circle, side, and left. Side, circle, side, and left. And one more circle to this direction. Now stop at the top. Go to the right knee. Come back up over the top. Go into a left leg side lunge and lift up over the top. Go to the right knee and lift. Good, and go to the left knee and lift. Take this a little faster by tightening up through the middle. Take it over and side one more. Now figure eight, so it goes around into the middle, down around the bottom, and through the middle. And then just keep a continuous flowing motion. And finish this final figure eight, and then reverse the direction once you get to the top. Then go the opposite direction. Curve through the middle, involve your legs, big reach. Try and incorporate as many muscle groups as you can as you warm up. And hold it at the top. Take it down to the right foot. Bring it into the chest. Go up to that left shoulder. Take it down to the right foot and up to the left shoulder. And down to the right and up. And one more. Now down, down to the left foot. Bend your knees and push up through the stretch. Down to the floor. Push up through the stretch. Down and push. And down. Now take it down to the right foot. And instead of bending your elbows, swing all the way up. Swing forward and down. And swing up. And swing forward and down. And swing it back up. And forward and down. Now go to the left side. So go down to that left foot. Keep the arms straight as you swing forward and up. So you're looking for that rotation, that twisting, but that stabilization through the hips and the pelvis. And one more. And come up. Now keep your legs apart. Swing behind you, up and over the top. Swing down behind you, and up over the top. And swing it down. And lift, and swing it down. Good. Now bring your legs together and circle the head. Big circle up and around. And big circle up and around the back of the head. And once more. Reverse the circle. And around. And circle. And one more. Good. Let's bring the ball down and sit right up on top of it. Now, I don't care if you're on your mat. In fact, you don't have to be on your mat at all. But as you come to the ball, you just want to make sure you're nice and safe. That the ball supports your weight when you sit on it. Okay, placing the hands at your side. Sit your body up with strong posture so you're not slouched, but lifted and open through the collarbone and chest. Take your hands at the fingertips to the side. Bring your right knee up. Set it down. Bring your left knee up. So it's going to feel like you're marching. Focus into your hips and pelvis. 
So you get rid of any of those little wobbles and lift up. Good. Now take your hands to your hips, same thing, lift your right leg. And notice as soon as that leg lifts up, the other leg stabilizes underneath you. Take the right leg up and set it down and take the left leg up. Now take your arms out to the side, reach them out. Step up with the right foot and down. Step up with your left foot. Now reach the arms up above your head, and lift your right leg and then lift your left leg. Now keep your feet down and bring your hands to the side of the ball. Walk your feet forward just barely, so you're not going into your low back, but you're feeling just the back side of your glutes on the ball. Hands here, open up the chest, lift the chin. Take your right knee and lift it up and stabilize your left leg. So this wobbling, engage. Extend your legs straighter, down to the floor, lift back up and bend your knee. Take it again, extend up, lengthen down, lift higher, and bend your knee. And extend and lengthen, and lengthen to the floor. Bring it back up, and bend your knee. Take this one more time, extend long stretch, stabilize hips, engage belly button to back, and bring it in. Take that foot down, bring your left leg up, stabilize. Extend the leg straight, Lengthen down, lift back up, and bend at the knee. Extend and lengthen out, lower down. Very smooth, very fluid, very controlled. Stable base in the hips, lift back up, and bend it in. Take your foot to floor. Walk your feet a little further out, so you're going now to your low back. You don't want your feet in real close to the ball. You want to bring them out so that your base is a little stronger and you're anchoring your low back. Take your hands forward. Think of a low or a belt loop right in the back side of your pants. And then pull your belt loop in towards the ball. Push the belt loop off the ball and take that again. Pull back. Push it away. Pull back and in. Push it off. Pull back and in and push it off. Two more like that. And push off. And one more. Now little change. Pull your belt loop back into the ball. Take the arms over your head. Bring the arms forward first, then push off the ball. Pull the belt loop back and in. Extend the arms up above your head. Bring the arms forward. Push off the ball. Pull the belt loop in. Take the arms up. Always moving very fluid and come back up. One more. Reach up. Bring it forward. Little change on this next one. Pull the belt loop in. Take the arms up. Keep the arms above your head as you sit up and off and bring them forward. Pull them into the belt loop. Take them above your head. Now push off the ball with your arms above your head and then reach forward. So when you sit up, you want your arms above your head right here. There you go, good, and reach forward. Take it one more time, pull back, arms above your head. Push off the ball, lift, good, bring it forward. Take your arms and clasp the hands together. Lift high into the sky, now collapse the hands into the chest and lean back over the ball. From there, reach all the way back up to the ceiling. Engage and reach forward, lift higher, collapse to the ball. Push up. Do that again. Reach forward. Lift up. As you collapse to the ball, exhale. Ha. And lift back up. And reach forward. Lift up. Collapse to the ball. Reach up. Once more. Forward. Lift. Collapse. Sit up. Swing your arms forward, then to the side, like you're swinging a bat, baseball bat. And swing and swing, and swing, and swing, and swing, go to center. Take your hands behind the back of your head. Engage right here, nice and tight. Let it go behind you and hold. Bring it back up, lift. Now in two counts, go down to one, two, up, 
too. Be careful not to release the head and the neck back. So the head and the neck, the chin should be in the same position when you're down and when you're up. And lift. And ah. Uh, and lift. Two more. Press. And lift. One more. All the way up to the top. And just sit up nice and tall. So that's some really good deep abdominal work. It's some of the best. The legs are busy holding you still so they can't grip at the hip flexors. And the range of motion on the ball is huge. We're going to go into some really detailed twisting, internal, external, oblique work. As you walk your feet back out, don't panic. I will give you some breaks here. So again, make sure the ball's supporting your weight. This is a lot harder when the ball's squishy. Now take your hands and reach forward. Feel your belt loop and then twist to the right. Take your right hand higher, your left arm further across. So that's gonna create that internal oblique line. Now take your belt loop and pull back, and push off, and pull back, and push off, and pull back, and push off. Two more, pull back, and push. Now keeping the rotated position, but rotating a little more to the right side. Just twist and twist. Continue with those arms in the same place so that left arm reaches across the chest. The other arm high above and it allows you a little more motion. Putting these two moves together, pull the belt loop back, sit up, then twist. Pull back on the angle, sit up and twist. Two more, pull back, sit up, twist. One more. Pull back, sit up, and twist. Give yourself a little rest as you lift up off the rib cage. Now going to the other side, walk your feet out and get your low back engaged so you pull that belly button in, reach to the front, and then twist to the left. Take your left hand higher, right hand further. So if you exaggerate that left right arm coming across, you're going to get a nice twist. Pull back into the belt loop and push off. And pull back and push off and pull back and push away and pull back. Now rotate to the left side, twist. So that's going right through the external oblique muscle. And four more. And three and two. And we put the two moves together. Pull back on the angle, push off and twist. So internal here, external there. Internal here, external there. One more. Pull back and twist. Come back up. Good deep work right there. Okay, walk your hands or your feet back out. Engage belly button into the spine. Reach forward. Get that little C curve of the tailbone under. Twist again to the right. Same position. Right hand up. Left arm reaches across. Your left elbow, so the one that's reaching across, pulls back. You drop the right arm. You reach back across and twist. So pull in and push out. And pull and push. And the arms are really important. They allow more motion and more range of motion. So as you pull, that right arm drops. You push and cross. Pull. Now take this move a little more aggressively. Pull back and push. Pull back and push. Make sure you lift that belt loop up and off. Let's go for four more. Focus the belt loop on the back side of your pants right there. Push off. Last one. And take a little rest. And we'll finish on to that left side. As you walk your feet a little more forward, tailbone comes under. Reach forward. Twist to your left. Make sure the left arm goes higher. The right arm really pulls across, and the first move that you make is with the right elbow pulling back and drop the left arm. Pull down, push across. Pull down, push across. Pull and drop, push across. Pull and drop, push across. Two more slow. Then when it gets a little faster, you're looking for dynamics. You want that belt loop to come up off the ball. Here we go, fast moves. Eight, push, seven, push. Good, make sure it's your left arm that's high. The other one's pulling and pushing across. 
push. Last one. Pull and push. Good. Release. Okay. Just bring your body to your uh, thighs. Reach down to the floor and just push the hips back. Release your head and shake the tension out of your neck. If you're comfortable in that position, lift your toes and push your heels down, pushing the ball a little further back for a hamstring stretch. And then transition up and stand up, taking you to the side of your hip. So you will need your mat now for your knees. I don't care if you fold it, pat it, turn it vertical or horizontal, but you want to turn the mat to where your knees are protected by it. I don't care which side you start with, we will get them both, but push into the side of your hip. Let the other leg come out as an anchor. Then drape your body over the side of the ball and bring your hand to the floor or to the side of the ball, whatever you can touch. So if you can touch the floor, go there. If the ball's too large, take it to the side of the ball. Place your hand now to the back side of your head. And if that becomes too intense, just place it down in front of the ball. Start to lift that top leg up and lower and lengthen it and lower it. Be careful not to push all your weight into the ball. It's just there for support. You're lifted. You could take the ball away. Take a little faster and pull up. And again, if you get too tense in this upper arm, place that hand on the front of the ball. Four more. And three. Now on this last one, keep the leg up. Give me a little circle to the front. Circle to the back. Figure eight. Circle forward. Now we did a lot of this move last week without the ball. So again, your posture needs to be supported and not rely on the ball there. Now swing your leg forward. Swing backwards. Try not to let the leg drop in the middle. Swing forward. Swing back. Swing forward. Swing back. Swing forward. Swing back. Now lift up. Touch your foot down in front of you and lift up, stabilizing the posture, the ball, and the bottom leg to the mat. Lift. Now bring your knee towards your elbow. Bring it in. Contract. Leg goes out. Elbow goes up. Contract. And lift. Contract. And lift. Contract. Open it up. This time, contract knee in, circle the arm, and reach over the head, lengthen the stretch. Pull in, lengthen the stretch. Pull in, and stretch. One more. Keep your arm and leg straight, pull them upward. Lift, lift, lift. One more. Just stretch that side of your hip, turn towards the ball, and bend the knee that you just worked, and then drape your body over. So you're stretching right there through the side hip. Now before we go to the other hip, put your knees on the mat so your knees are protected and face the ball. With your hands on top of the ball, rolling forward into a plank position or a knee plank position, look at my uh, positioning here. I'm nice and straight. You don't want to break at the hip. You want to keep everything straight. So push your thighs forward and your belly forward and start to roll the ball forward. Get to where you can place your elbows on top of the ball. Now put pressure in the elbows. Push the ball down and your neck long. And then feel that position of your thighs pushing forward, your pelvis pushing forward, your triceps engaged in the back side of your arms. Now just roll the ball back in. Body stays straight and roll back out again. Hold there. Push down with your elbows. Be aggressive. Take your back feet, tuck your toes, and lift your knees up off the ground. Push down with your elbows. Lengthen your neck and chin, your head and shoulder position. Now bring your knees down and roll the ball towards you. Lift back up. Take it again and roll out to your elbows. Once you're there, push down, tuck your toes under, and lift your knees. Hold. Really embracing that belly, that low tummy and the back. Bring the knees back down. 
bring the ball back in. Hold. Now I'm going to take you into a position where you're going to be out there for a while. So you can stay on your knees or we can go to the plank. But no, you're going to be there for a minute. Go ahead and roll back out. Push down. Tuck the toes and lift. Engage center. Hold strong. Now from here, just roll the ball forward and back. Tiny, little motion under the stability. Now side to side. Keep pushing aggressively into the elbows and take it now into a circle. Reverse your circle direction. Again, it's not real big. It's a little bit of motion under stability. Hold the ball center still. Bring your knees back down. Pull the ball back in towards you. Put your fingertips on top. Roll the ball forward and pull your hips back and drop your head. Now come back up. Put your tummy on the ball and drape yourself over the top. Hands to the floor, knees to floor. Now from here, tuck your toes and lift your knees off the floor. So your hands are still on floor. I'm going to create a little position called the bird dog position. Keep your hands on the floor for now. Keep your neck up so that your back of the neck is long and take your right leg and lift it off the ground. Lower it back down. Lift it up. Lower it down. So you're pulling from the floor up using the back side of your leg. The back is a stable muscle, strong. Lift it up and hold. Stay there. Now take the leg out to the side. Bring it back to center. Take it back out to the side. Bring it back to center. One more. Bring it back to center, hold. Okay, you're already got the leg up. With your opposite arm, left hand, start to reach forward. Hold. Take it down to the floor. Pull it back up. Open to opposite sides. Bring it back to center. Take it down to the floor. Lift back up. Open to opposite sides. And come back to the center. Take it down. And lift back up. Open to opposite side. Center. Good. Two more. Lower. Lift. Side. Center. One more. Lower. Lift, open opposite sides. Center, keep your leg up but your hand down. Bend your knee so your toe goes up. Extend the leg straight, toe goes up. So you should feel the back of your hamstring squeezing the muscle in the back of the hamstring. Toe goes up, stay up. Take your tiptoe, lift it higher, higher. Again, positioning of the head is important also. It keeps your airway open. Four more, four. Three, two, and one. Bring the leg out to straight. Put your foot back on the floor. Reposition if you need to. Hands are down, legs are down. Start with your left leg now. Lift it up and down. Do it again. Lift up and down. So it's just your one leg moving. Everything else is still. You're in a very strong, good position, but the ball supported you. Take it up and hold it. Now take it open to the side. Bring it back in. Take it open to the side. Bring it back in. Take it open to the side. One more time, bring it in and stay positioned there. Now with your opposite arm, right hand reaches out. Hold, find your balance. Take it down to the floor. Lift it back up. Open to opposite sides. Bring it back to the middle. Take it down to the floor. Lift and lengthen out. Open to opposite sides. Bring it back to center. Take it down to the floor. Lift it back up. Open to opposite sides. Back to center, hold. Take your hand down, but not your leg. Keep your head nice and long. Now take your back leg, bend the toe, goes up, squeeze the hamstring, extend back out. Bend, squeeze hamstring, extend back out. And there's a lot more going on here than just the hamstring work. You're supporting upper body posture strong. Lower leg stable. On this next one, bend the knee and keep the knee bent. Reposition posture. Take that toe and lift to higher up. 
and lift and lift and lift four more in four three two and one bring the leg down bring your knees to the floor go ahead and roll yourself just on top of the ball and stretch out your low back Now we'll go to the other hip now. So as you transition yourself to the side of the ball with the other hip leading in. Push the side of the hip into the ball. Extend your opposite leg out and then drape yourself over the ball. Again, if you can touch the floor, that's the best place for the hand. If the ball's too big, support it on the side. Hand behind the head with strong posture. Lift your top leg up and down. So if I were to take this ball and pull it right out from underneath me, I would still be very supported in my position. And one more slow. And then take it a little faster. Pull and lift. Pull and lift. Pull and lift. Now you can do four more of these little lifts. On the last one, you'll stay at the top. Two more. Last one, hold up. Swing your leg to the front. Swing it back. Swing it forward. Swing back. Do it again. Swing forward. Swing it back. Take that one more time forward and back. Now take a little circle forward. Circle back. Circle forward. Making a little figure eight with the leg. Two more. If again your posture on your upper arm is weak, put your hand in front of the ball. Now take the leg, lift it up, and touch it in front of you. Lift up and touch it behind you. Lift up, touch it in front. Strength to lift up, touch it behind. Knee comes to the elbow now. Leg goes out, elbow goes up. Pull in and extend. The arm will circle over the top of the head, reach. Pull in reach, pull in, lengthen, one more, lengthen, hold everything straight, lift up, four, three, two, one, bend your knee and rotate towards the ball, try to relax your spine, this is a nice place, now you could drop your head and relax your neck, stretch out the side of your hip. Now as we go to the facing the ball section here, we're going to work into the back, upper back, middle back, and uh, small of the back, or the lower back. Face the ball. Get to where you can put your tummy on the ball. So if you get to the place you cannot breathe, move it around. It's probably just pressing against the diaphragm in the wrong place. And as you drape over the ball, bring your hands to the floor. On this one, I need the knees up. So you may want to separate the feet so they're a little wider, so you have a really strong base. Then I need you to release your hands forward. Place them behind the back of your head. Lower your torso forward. Now just lift up. Lift, squeeze, lower. Lift, squeeze, lower. Lift, squeeze, lower. Lift, squeeze. Reach forward. Swim the arms up and back around the side to down. Lift and lengthen and lifting the chest as you come to the top. Lift back extensions. Put your hands behind your head and lift up. Take your right hand, reach back, turn your head, look to the right. Put it behind your head and then come down. Lift up. Take your left arm, reach back, turn your head to the left. Put your hand behind the back of your head and then lower forward. Do it again. Pull up reach right, turn and rotate to the right. Put them behind your head, then lower forward. Lift up, left hand reaches back, turn to your left side, look. Put them behind your head, lower forward. This time lift up, take both hands back, but lift your chest, look forward. Put them behind your head before you drop down. Lift up, squeeze, take your arms back, lift the chest. Hands behind the back of your head, lower forward. Lift up. Hands back, lift chest. Hands go behind the head and lower forward. Take this one last time, lift up. Reach, lift. Hands go behind the head. 
reach forward. Stay there. Take your hands and reach forward. Now, instead of dropping down or up, go neutral. So somewhere between the two. As soon as you find neutral, take one hand and place it into the middle of your back and feel what's going on right there. Can you tell that those muscles are engaged? Middle back. It's a hard place to work. In fact, it's hard to work with a weight or a band or a bar. It's best to work with positioning. So that should be tight. Put your hands forward and that muscle needs to stay tight. Take your thumbs up and lift just the arms. So you're working into back of the shoulder, posterior deltoid, but you're also holding and supporting the muscles in the middle of your back. One more. Take your hands to the side and turn your palms down. The middle of your back should still be tight. Lift up and down as if you had little wings on. Very minimal, subtle movement into the shoulder muscle and holding the position in your back. Stay here, turn your thumbs up so your palms face forward. Little subtle motion, lift. And little tiny position changes in the shoulder rotation here. Still holding middle of the back strong. One more. Take the hands down, bend the elbow so that the thumbs go towards your ears. Now take your elbows, don't move your torso, and pull the elbows in towards the ribs. Slide the fingertips forward. Middle of the back should still be tight. Again, a really hard place to work. This is one of the best ways to get the middle back area. And slide them forward. Pull. Now I'm going to have you add a little motion here in the torso so it gets a little bigger. Pull the ch chest up, forward. Careful not to just drop down, but go back to neutral. Neutral position, middle position. One more. Isn't that awesome, that work in that middle back release down? Go ahead and roll your tummy around so it's not pressing against the belly right now. I'm going to take you into push-ups. The placement of the ball on your leg will determine how hard the push-up is. So the lower the ball is to your feet, the harder the push-up is. The higher it is to your pelvis, the easier the push-up becomes. As you find a place for the ball, start to put it underneath your lower body. So thighs, knees, feet, and your hands to floor. You can roll yourself or walk yourself forward if you want more challenge. Once you feel like you're in the right position for you, straighten the line. So from the top of your head, down the back of your neck, into your spine, and hips and feet should all be one line. Take the chest down, press against the floor, push it away. Lower, push the floor away. Be careful not to just nose dive the head and neck forward, but try to stay in a straight line. If this is too easy, take the ball lower. Down, if it's too difficult, take the ball higher. Progression, regression as you become stronger or need help and assistance in any way. I'm going to take you into fast. Don't fling it or swing it. Lower, push. Down, push. Push it. You got four. Three, two, and one. Go ahead and roll back. Release. <laughs> and then come off the ball. Taking you down, down to your back. Once you roll onto your back, you're going to put your right foot on top of the ball. You can rest it just underneath your calf or your ankle and then put your hands to the side of your body. Extend your left leg in the air. Now we're going to go into one leg circles and it's really easy to cheat these circles and miss the whole point of these circles. It's not about the moving leg. As I've said before a million times, you're not about how big you can make this flinging circle. It's about how tight you can hold the bottom leg on the ball without moving the ball and then putting the pelvis into that braced position where you are bracing the belly button into your back. Lengthen your leg up, circle inward. Inward. Now think about the ball and the foot that's on top of it. 
push down deep to engage the hamstring in the right leg, and then think about your pelvis. Reverse the circle, go outward. Try to keep the ball from moving, and once you engage leg, you should be engaging the pelvis even more deeper. Belly button to back, rib cage interlocked. One more, reverse and make it bigger. Ha! Challenge it, but again, don't miss where it's coming from. Don't think about the leg, think about the bottom leg. The pelvis, the abdominal, sucked in. Outward circle, make it a little bigger than it was the first time around. So it challenges that motion as it goes out to the side, and you have to anchor to pull the leg back in. Open. Open. One more. Good. Place that foot back down. Anchor the left foot onto the ball, and bring the right leg back up into the air. Take a little circle inward and just start the motion. Engage the pelvis, interlock the ribs, pull your belly button into your back, pay attention to your bottom leg and how it stabilizes the ball. Now outward motion. Again, focus on the bottom leg. If the ball is moving around, put a little more pressure in and engage the hamstring. Now inward circle a little bigger than it was the first time. So it's more challenging. Outward circle, a little bigger than it was the first time. Outward. Outward, one more. And bring the leg to the ball. Reposition both feet on the ball. And now lift the hips off the ground. Keep your hands at your side. Roll the ball from side to side. So when the ball starts to roll one direction, you've got to pull from the center to bring it back across from side to side. Finish in the middle. Finish it. Now reposition your feet and your hips up. Take your right foot and kick it to the ceiling and bring it back down. Take your left leg, kick it up. Bring it back down. Right leg goes up and down. So it's not about the leg that's in the air. It's about the leg that's coming down into it. Take it one more time on the right. Come back down. Finish on the left side. As you come back down, keep the hips up. Reposition the hips a little higher. Feet on the ball. Roll the ball towards your hips now. Push it away. Keep your knees close together. Roll in. Try to get the feet right on top of the ball as you roll in. Pull in. Push it away. Pull in. Push it away. Two more. Push it away. Now on this last one, keep the knees bent and together, feet on top. Now press the hips up and down. Lift. 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 And lift. Four more to lift. And three. And two. And one. Good. Release your hips down. Take a hold of the ball into your hands. As you lift the ball above your chest line, you're holding it and aligning up your hands and your arms and your shoulders. Then pull your shoulder blades down and take your feet into a tabletop position at 90 degree angle. Engage your low back by pushing the tummy downward as if you had a small ball underneath your back or somebody's hand underneath your back. Take your right tiptoe to the floor. Bring it back up. Take your left tiptoe to the floor and bring it back up. So right now the arms are not doing any motion. They're just holding the ball. Two toes at the same time. Press down in the back. You don't want to train the belly to bulge up. You want to pull it inward and downward. Pull and lift. Anchor the back. Belly button into the back. One more. We're going to add some motion with the ball. Ball goes over the head as the toes go down. The head is still down. Lift back up. Open. Lift. Open. Lift. Open, lengthen, and lift. Give me four more right there. Open. Really focusing down into the low back on this one. And lift. Two more. And lift. One more. As you come up, stay up and place the ball now in your leg somewhere, somewhere in that lower leg. 
and then just bend your knees a little bit. Take the arms and reach up as if you're holding a ball in your hands. Then from there, take the legs down and open the arms over your head. Pull them back together. Now most likely the ball or the feet will not touch. You're trying to lengthen and open the body and then pull it back together. Think of your pinkies, your pinky fingers. Pull and touch the ball. Open, pull up and touch the ball. Open, pull up and touch. Two more. Open, pull up and touch. Last one. And pull up and touch. Good. Take the ball from your legs for a second and bring your knees to chest. We're going to take our focus into the low tummy and the inner thighs. Place the ball back between the legs, somewhere in the lower leg position. Then take your hands out to the side. Anchor again your belly button to your backbone so you're feeling like you're pushing down into your back. Now squeeze the legs into the ball in, in, engaging the adductor muscles in the inner thighs. Couple more. Now in a second I'm going to ask you to just simply bend your knees with the ball staying in between the legs. From here, bend your knees. Extend your legs back up. So if you think about it, as you bend, it's quadricep. It's like doing a squat upside down. Bend, lift, bend, lift, bend, lift, bend. As you come back up, stay up, stay up, and squeeze the ball. Four, three, two, now bend your knees. Extend your legs. Stay up and squeeze the ball in four, three, two, bend your knees down. Extend and lengthen up. Squeeze the ball. Four. Notice your low tummy right there. Every squeeze. Lower down and in. Low tummy. Every time you squeeze the ball, that low tummy pulls in, engages, and bend. Lift up and hold. Take your hands right at your chest. You're going to catch the ball in a second. And when you do that, your legs will open into a straddle. Be ready to catch it. Open the legs, catch the ball. Toss the ball, catch it in your legs. Drop the ball, catch it. So practice slow for a second, and then I'll speed it up. And catch the ball. You ready? A little faster. Catch, toss. Catch, toss. Catch, toss. One more. And toss. Relax. Okay, good. Now bring your legs back up to tabletop position, 90 degrees, and set your ball on the left knee. So right on that left knee. Bring your hands in front of the ball, so closer to your chest. Now engage the ball into your knee by pushing the hands into the ball. And then once you feel that, push the knee back into the ball. Notice what you feel. If you were to take one hand to your tummy right there, that's where it should feel tight. So by pushing the knee in and pushing the ball to the knee, it tightens right there. If you even release a second or an inch, it releases the tummy. So you want to feel that tight tummy. Take your right leg tiptoe to floor. Bring it back up. Now it's not about the moving leg at all. It's about the holding leg that's pushing against the ball to engage that whole side of the tummy. It's about the hands pushing down in the ball. A couple more. And again, it's easy to cheat. This is one that you can't necessarily see the motion because it's isometric. It's holding, tightening over time. It's called tut training. Hold here and switch legs. Put the ball onto the right knee, the hands in front, so the left leg's free. Now push down hard with the hands into the ball, the ball pushing into the knee. Now push back with the knee. Tension over time. Left toe goes down and up, down, up. Tension in that whole right side of the abdominal. Push down. And again, you release for even an inch. That abdominal contraction is gone. And the whole focus is on isometric tension in that tummy holding. And you've got one more toe touch. And bring it back up. Good. Take the ball back to your left leg. Now this time, extend the legs a little straighter and place the ball on the front side of your left leg. So it's like on the shin bone. Same idea here. The right leg is free. 
put tension into the leg. So you're pushing against the ball, then the leg pushes back against the ball, tightens the tummy. Drop the free leg down, circle around the side and back up. Drop the leg down, around the side and back up. So the motion is challenging the tension of the muscle that's holding, which is the stomach muscle, the leg muscle. Make sure you breathe. Now I'm going to have you reverse the circle so it's going to go outward next. Go out, down, back up towards the ball. The entire time pressure in the hands. And again, because this is isometric, you can't see the movement. It's very internal. It's very personal. You're accountable for how hard you push that ball into your leg and how hard the leg pushes back to the ball. One more circle. And bring it in. Extend your leg up and put tension on the right leg. The left leg is free, lift it off the ground, lift it up. Now again, you could be holding that ball there and feel absolutely nothing. Engage. Now drop that leg down, circle, up, down. My abs are tremoring right now. They're shaking. Tension. Drop circle. Take this one more time. Now reverse. This bracing concept is such a good concept. It's what protects and supports your low back. It's what you should be doing when you're moving outside of class in motion to protect your motion and the core. Two more. And one more. And bring the knees in. Good. Oh. Ooh, I like that response because then I know you're doing something, you're feeling something in there. And again, sometimes this is hard to see. So again, I use that concept, that bracing. If you're going to move, you're going to slip, you're going to fall, you're going to be bounced around, you're going to move abruptly and quickly, you've got to brace. It's all inside. It's all that deep ab abdominal contraction to protect. Okay, series of five. Pull your knees in and bring the ball over the top of your legs and lift your chest. As you do that, drop the chin forward rather than looking up to the ceiling, look down and forward. Ball goes over the head, legs extend out. Pull in. Extend. Pull in. Lengthen. Pull in. Now a little variation of this. Extend out length and then kick your legs up and put your ball to the front of your legs. Lift, open carefully, knees tuck in and reach out. Kick the legs up, touch the legs. Now be careful as you come down, you lengthen. You don't want to pop the rib cage up and extend and lengthen. Kick up, lengthen out, pull back in. One more time, extend and lengthen. Kick up, lengthen and pull back in. Release your head and neck down and your ball over the top of your head. Okay, next one is the single leg stretch. Lift the ball up above your chest and lift your head and shoulders off the ground. Bring one knee to chest and extend the other leg straight. Now see if you can lift your chest a little higher up into that top leg. Keep your chin forward. Switch legs. Switch again. Switch again. Switch again. As you switch, take the ball up, bring it back up. So it goes over your head and bring it back up. And over the head, bring it up. One more. Bring it back up. Bring your knees in, take the ball over your head and rest. So you're working with a weighted, big, large object in your hand. That adds a lot of resistance to these moves. Not only is it weighted, but it's big. Take your right leg, extend it higher. Take your left leg, extend it lower over the floor. Bring the ball up to touch the front of your top leg. Now bring that chin forward. As you engage, embrace the belly into the back. Scissor your legs, take the ball over the head. Come up and touch the right leg every single time. Scissor. So we lengthen the lever as we go into the single straight leg stretch. Pull. One more on this side. Come back up. Bring your knees to chest, ball over your head. This time extend your left leg up. Take your right leg and extend over the floor. 
engage by pulling your chest up and the ball to the top of the leg. Now scissor and take the ball up. Scissor and bring it back up. Scissor and scissor up. Breathe. Hard parts is where you should exhale the air out and down. One more lift. Good. Bring the knees in and the ball over the head. You have two more in the series of five. The, sing or the straight leg stretch or double straight leg stretch. The legs go up. Place the ball somewhere between them. Now this is going to be a lot harder than normal. You've got a weighted big object between the legs. Take the hands behind the head and lift the chest. Even if you were to drop your legs only one or two inches, you would feel this. So think about your rib cage, belly button supporting back, and start to lower the legs. Bring the legs back up, and I want you to just kind of go slow at your own timing. So test the waters, how low you can go, and still keep your rib cage engaged. Your low back pushing downward, whether it touches the mat or not, you want to feel it pushing down, not up. And then find that motion that's smooth and steady, not abrupt or quick or jerky, but so smooth. Finish the one you are doing, not about quantity, but quality. And then bring that ball to your hands. Take the ball over the top of your head. The final move today is the crisscross. Bring one knee to chest and extend the other leg straight out over the floor. Start to lift the chest, and without bringing the hands forward, keep them above your head. Rotate the torso towards the knee, then switch sides. Switch again, switch again, switch again, switch again. Four, three, two, and one. Good. Take the ball over your head. Place the ball underneath your legs. Now, before we go into some stretches, I'm going to give you one final challenge. Take the ball kind of at the lower end of your feet. So mine's right under my heels. Place the hands above your head. Start to bring your hands forward and lift your head and shoulders off the ground. Now, see if you can go a little higher. Can you get up to the roll up? Lower your spine one vertebrae at a time. Now that you know where you're going, adjusting the position of your feet and the ball, roll up. See if you can go a little higher. Brace. I don't care how high you can go. It's not a competition. But I want you to go deep, deep, deep. And when you feel like you're stuck, see if you can go deeper. And so smooth. It's not worth uh, flinging yourself into it. I'd rather you stay lower. I would rather you stay lower than fling it. Once you get the motion, you might be able to start coming up a little higher. So continue to motion through it. Don't stop. Once you get to the bottom, start to go back up to the top. You're looking for that teaser position with the ball resting the legs so that it's all in the tummy. It's not in the legs at all. That's why this is so difficult. Most of you try to use your legs when we come up. Take this one last time wherever you are. And when you're all done, stay down. And hold. Ah, good. Okay, let's stretch. Taking your right knee, pull it towards your chest. Keep your left foot on the ball. Give it a little tug, an active tug. Open the knee out to the side and get that stretch down the adductor muscle. Hold the knee across. And as you start to pull it across you, take the leg that has the ball and roll it the opposite direction with your foot. Love the resistible ball Pilates class. It's so unique to any of the other classes. The moves that we do, some of them just cannot even be done unless you have a ball. And some of those muscle groups, you just can't get really well without a ball. Go back to center and place your foot on the thigh. Roll the ball towards your hip with the bottom foot, and then use your hands to assist that top leg stretch. Things like that middle back muscle that you just can't get unless you're holding a neutral position on that ball. So unique to the ball work. Push the ball away from you and change legs. 
So now bring the knee to the chest on the left side. Still using all the Pilates concepts. We used control. Every move required so much control by the use of the ball. Open the knee to stretch the adductor. Concentration very much required when you're working with the ball. Centering, huge. Anytime you lift a ball or move a ball, you center. Now pull it across, and as you pull the leg across, roll the ball the opposite direction. The other concepts of Pilates, precision and detail. You had to know exactly where every piece of your body was when you worked with the ball. Everything smooth and fluid, and you need to incorporate the breathing as you move, never holding your breath. Bring it back to middle, and cross that foot over your thigh, and roll the ball towards your hips. Another very popular concept of Pilates is stabilize and then move. And with the ball, very, very important to stabilize and then add the motion. Good. And release the ball, pushing it away. Coming now into a seated position, either roll to your side or rock yourself up to seated. With the ball in between the legs, go into a straddle. And then just roll the ball forward, allowing the head to drop between the two arms and pushing the pelvis muscles back through the hips and forward with the belly. Let the ball rock side to side, just very subtle motion. You might find that you're a little stiffer on one side of your low back than the other, and you wouldn't know that if you weren't moving and then hold it still and roll it towards you. Roll the ball now down the inside of your leg. Put your hand on top and go into a side stretch. Reach the ball up higher to the ceiling. and Just turn your head to look at the hand. Bring the hand back over, turn towards the ball, and then roll the ball further out getting a much deeper stretch right in that back. Roll the ball back in and roll it down the inside of your left leg. Take your hand on top and then reach over the top to a side stretch. 